Hello, welcome to Animation One to Ones from Squiggly.com. I'm Steve Henderson. On today's episode, we talk to producer Roy Conley. Since joining Disney in the 1990s, Conley has led a team who've brought us Hunchback of Notre Dame, Treasure Planet, Tangled, and the Oscar winning Big Hero 6, as well as the latest film that's in cinemas now, Strange World. Squiggly's Ryan Gore sat down for a cup of tea with producer Roy Conley to talk about his career highlights and all things leading up to Strange World. Over to you, Ryan. We are here with the producer of Strange World, Roy Conley. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing ex- exceedingly well. Very <laughs> nice to be here. Great to hear. So, um, yeah, when was the last time you were able to do a big press tour in person like this? Wow. Uh, you know, uh, I think that the last time, particularly in London, was probably for Big Hero 6. Wow. Um, I produced uh, the Baymax series, which is out on Disney+. Plus. And, you know, it happened in the midst of the pandemic, mm-hmm. so there was no, no getting out into the world at that point. Um, and I also produced uh, the uh, Disney Nature uh, mm-hmm. uh, titles. And uh, I, I was over here literally just before the shutdown uh, right. doing recording and, uh, and mixing. So wow. uh, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah, a good few years. Seven years since the the Big Hero Six one, you know. Yeah, I know. movies have changed so much since then, just in terms of the type of movies that are made and where they're shown. Right. How did that, if at all, affect the kind of tor- the kind of story you told on Strange World? Um, I think that we we always envisioned Strange World for the big screen, mm. uh, and in terms of the type of movie. Uh, you know, my director, Don Hall, really wanted to tell a big adventure, action adventure. Yeah. Um, you know, and, he, you know, he, he's in the, his, you know, his favorite films are Star Wars and Raiders and whatnot. And he thought that this was his opportunity to go ahead and do something with that kind of size. And uh, I think he's done an amazing job. Mm-hmm. From the presentation you did earlier, the one thing that stuck out of me is the word you said a couple of times, and that's legacy. Yeah. Um, that word is quite pertinent through the movie. It has very environmentalist themes. Um, so did you have a sense of kind of existentialism in making this movie? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, you know, I think uh, in terms of existentialism, we're always kind of... <laughs> <laughs> there's always an element of that in your life. Uh, I think for us, as we were building the film... Uh, the the this world became you know analogous in mm. a certain sense to our world. Uh, what I love about this film is that it is a mythological place, and in it being mythological, you can actually tell a story that's fun and entertaining and adventure filled. But you know, but you can also talk about important things. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, a big thing that sticks out to me is the art style of the film, mm. and particularly the kind of the chunkiness and exaggeration of the character models. That's great. Could you talk about the uh, inspiration behind? Yeah, absolutely. That? One of the things that we did when we first went into character design is we played we played with the concept of some French and Belgian comics. We were kind of oh, looking at French and Belgian comics always. You know, we're always influenced somewhat by anime as well. We, mm. You know, obviously, Big Hero Six was was heavily influenced by anime, but um, it was French and Belgium comics. And then, as we were seeing some tests, some animation tests, we recognized that w- the style that we were kind of animating to was kind of the 1950s circa, um, you know, Ichabod Crane mm. and that kind of. Disney style, where it was very exaggerated. Um, so we we pushed in that direction. One of the things that I love, I started my career in hand drawn animation, and then you know have moved into CG, and I love it. Yeah. Uh, I love what you can do with CG, but there's still that DNA of hand drawn in our CG, right? Yeah. And I think it gives a fluidity and it gives an art to mm-hmm. what we create. Yeah, that's really interesting. I did, I did see you say, like, Disney's DNA as a hand-drawn studio made this movie yeah. look as good as it did. Yeah. Do you mean, like, just the way characters move, just the way the... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Works? You know, it's, it's, you know, first of all, I, I did a film several years back called Tangled. Yeah. Uh, and 
the head of animation, one of the heads of animation, we had three heads of animation, was Glenn Keane, mm-hmm. you know, probably the greatest hand-drawn animator of the latter part of the 20th century and, uh, and, and still is animating. Yeah. Um, I, I think that that uh, influence has carried through all our work, in a mm-hmm. sense. And th- the idea that animation is a... Uh, extension of reality as yeah. opposed to a reflection of reality I think is really important in terms of what we do and and, it, and that to me is what the definition of animation is, it is an extension Yeah, and going back to kind of your inspiration from comics and anime and manga I feel like western animation is kind of find, find its way back to that, you know, find its way back to inspiration from the page and that kind of comes with a and a an abandoning of realism. Yeah. So how do you feel about the amount of realism you're putting into movies nowadays? Well, I think that's the interesting thing with CG is because you can get a lot of nuance. Mm. Um, and I, you know, I think I draw a line between realism and naturalism, actually. Because sure. naturalism, I, you know, realism is actually an extension also of the natural, in a way. Mm. Um, so, no, I think... You know, it really comes down to the story. The story is going to determine the type of animation that you do. Uh, for one film, you know, uh, very realistic, you, you know, uh, well-timed, hu- you know, yeah. contained human movement may work. Uh, but for this film, we're in a strange world. We're <laughs> in this world that is uh, enormous and awe-inspiring. And I think getting that reflection in the characters mm. is kind of magic. Yeah. It's interesting to hear you talk about kind of the um, the way that hand-drawn and CG kind of work hand in hand. Because I was thinking earlier, I think it makes 11 years since Winnie the Pooh, which is the last, I believe, fully traditionally animated Disney movie. Is there a desire from you or from anyone at the studio to return to that for a feature-length movie? Yeah, I think if the right story came along, yeah. interestingly... Don Hall, who directed Strange World and directed Big Hero 6, also did Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, his roots are in that hand-drawn thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think if the right, if the right uh, story came along, that would be perfect for hand-drawn. Uh, yeah, I would love to. I mean, I, I, I love both art forms. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, something that's definitely in the air at Disney is this... Uh, kind of, not obsession, but a focus on the generational differences between families and those relationships. We've seen a few over like the last year or so. So what particularly excites you about telling that kind of story? Well, I think it's kind of interesting in today's day and age, looking at boomers, millennials, Gen Xs, and Gen Zs, you know. Yeah. It's, it, it's such a part of our culture now, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so I think... You know, just in the zeitgeist of what's going on in society, um, you know, a Gen Zer thinks a lot differently than a millennial. You know, uh, uh, um, you know, a boomer thinks a lot differently than an Xer. Yeah, well, not that much different. Than <laughs> but anyway, it, you know, I think that's it. Part of the zeitgeist of where we are right now as a society. Yeah, there's definitely been an acceleration that's kind of required those labels to exist, right? Maybe them. Really, really important. Yeah, no, um, absolutely. Tea? Oh, <laughs> it's fine. We're, we'll they're roll, they're but... bringing tea to us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, how did you go about getting in contact with each generation, particularly that uh, Gen Z mindset? Well, you know what's wonderful about our studio is it is a reflection of all those generations. Mm-hmm. You know, we we've we've got boomers. Me, uh, we've got uh, millennials. Uh, we've got uh, Xers, which I think is Don would be an Xer, right? Uh, and then we have uh, you know Zs we're running around helping us build these films. So because we're a collaborative art form, and because everybody touches each, you know, one frame of film, there's generally forty to fifty people who have somehow touched it in some way. Yeah. And we're always thinking about story, right? Mm-hmm. Every comment within every department has to do with story. You know, uh, if it's an effect shot, what is the effect that is going to help, you mm-hmm. know, promote the story? If it's a lighting shot, 
where does the light need to be in order to accentuate the story? So uh, everyone t- brings their generational input into that sure. as well. Mm. Uh, it's obviously about producing Don Hall after everything you achieved on Big Hero 6. I was wondering if as a producer, is there kind of a grand unifying Disney idea that you try to guide filmmakers towards? You know, I, I think my, my job is to get Don's vision on screen. Mm. And I think think my job also is to ensure that the whole team, the artistic team, the technical teams, but, but I, and I consider the technical, technical teams are, are artists as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the production teams, I think my job is to supply context, is to make sure that everybody understands why we're doing something, why a choice has been made. Um, I think the, 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 the trap many people can fall into is uh, telling someone, uh, we want it this way, without sure. telling them why. Mm. Why is the most important thing, I think, in producing. Mm. What were the big accomplishments that you made on Big Hero 6 that you wanted to kind of transport over to this movie? Oh, wow, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. My... Uh, I started my career in theater and then moved into animation. Um, and for a good chunk, I would say the first 10 years of my uh, work in, in animation, I thought of myself as a theatrical producer working mm. in animation. And I think since Tangled, uh, definitely since Tangled, I've thought of myself as an animation producer who used to work in theater. And that switch has been fascinating. And I think, you know, from Tangled to Big Hero to this, I just continue to want to explore ways of telling stories that touch audiences mm. uh, from a comedic to, uh, you know, to, to a heartfelt way. And that's, it's, it, you grow. You know, I think you grow and you grow as an artist um, in how do you tell a story. And that's, it's, it's a, a, a perpetual step-by-step process. And so I just, I think between then and now, I'm just trying to get better at what I do. Hmm. I'm curious about the jump you made from theater to animation. How did that go? Uh, you know, very, very easy in one way. Uh, because I knew about design. I knew about, you know, I knew about how to produce uh, a story. Uh, um, the one thing I didn't know is anything about animation, right? <laughs> but when it came to the design aspect, when it came to the scripting aspect, when it came to, you know, working, you know, layout artists in many senses are set designers, mm. right? Um, I I totally understood that. So the first, I would say the first five years of my career, uh, I would do eight hours a day helping develop the the. The, the film, right. and then at night I would be looking at every video, read every book I could in terms of animation until I would say five years into working with Disney, um, I had a pretty good idea of what I was doing. <laughs> That's good to hear. Um, I noticed the theme through a few movies you've produced Treasure Planet, Big Hero 6, and now Strange World is the design of a world. Mm. How is that process? What do you love about it? What do you not so love about it? <laughs> well, you know, when you're working with some of the greatest visual development artists in the industry and when you're working with great directors, you, you know, it really is about letting them loose, mm. you know. Um, the, when you're building a world, and I think Don did this so beautifully uh, on this film, he wanted to get as much information as he could from his visual development artists. Mm. And then from that, we started winnowing down, you know. Uh, you want to get you want to get as many options as you possibly can and then make decisions. And that's what Don is really good at. I, I, he makes decisions and he makes them quickly. And then if he realizes he's, we, we've gone down a wrong road, he admits it and <laughs> he makes a new decision. Um, worked with a gentleman by the name of Ed Catmull who uh, always used to say, find your mistakes early mm. and then change. <laughs> How often it, does it happen where, is there, is there ever, do you ever go down a path too long for it to be reversed almost? 
if you do make well, that's an interesting decision. question. I, you know, have we gone down a path too long? There have been situations in the past where we find ourselves um, that we've gone down a path and we need to make a significant change. The wonderful thing about Disney animation is we have a thing called all hands on deck. <laughs> and if we, need, if we need to make the story stronger, we will do everything we can within that studio to make it come together. Um, I've never felt abandoned in any way or like I had to um, compromise, hmm. you know. Uh, I think, comp- in, in my opinion, you do compromise when you're building a film. There, there has to be compromises. But those compromises are about what goes into production first, you know, what's ready for production. And if something isn't ready for production, you always make sure that it's perfect before you release it. Hmm. As you mentioned earlier, a lot of your recent work has been around wildlife documentaries. How did that experience inform what you were able to do on this project? Well, uh, the wonderful thing about uh, Strange World is that you're walking into a wild land that no one has ever seen. Uh, and I think the wonderful thing about watching the, the Disney nature films is you get to live in a land that most people don't get to. You know, I've, I've been to the Antarctic. You know, I've been virtually to the Antarctic. <laughs> I've been to the you know uh, to the polar regions, the North Pole. I've been you know all over the world with these films, and it's always new, and it's always you know the Qinghai Plateau in China is a totally amazing place mm-hmm. that probably a handful of people from the West have been able to mm-hmm. to see. So uh, that I think contributes to the fact of finding the wonder of the land in Strange World. Yeah, it feels like a Disney movie is essentially amalgamations of everyone's life experience. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's what storytelling is. Mm-hmm. It's taking your, not, not only experience, but um, your emotional core sure. and placing it into a world, you know? Mm. And when we build a story, we always start with the world. And then we go to character, and then we start crafting story. Is that scary to pour so much of yourself into something? No. No? That's what, you know, I think it keeps you young. Mm. I think it, uh, it's what we do, you know, it's what we do. You know, putting yourself, uh, I mean, the the fact of the matter is you put it on screen so no one (laughs) sees you. You know, so, but it's, it's, I I don't know, it's, it's kind of joyous, I Mm. think. I want to touch on Kingdom Hearts very quickly. Oh my god! <laughs> I haven't talked about Kingdom Hearts in a long time. I was talking uh, about that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, I had to grow my hair back. <laughs> Everybody thought I looked like Lord Zaynort. So <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah. So, how was the experience on working on three? What did you learn from it, and what were you able to apply into your work in the future from that? Well, you know, I mean, it's interesting because my hands-on work was mostly story on mm-hmm. on Kingdom Hearts, so it was very interesting looking at this, the the levels of structure that you have to do for, you know, uh, the gaming industry. Sure. So that was really interesting, which to me ties tangentially t- to a certain degree with the idea of, you know, some sort of meta production in the future if you're going to do something virtual or augmented. I find that interesting, but I also know that the difference between story for a game and story for a film is enormously different because what you're trying to do is leave options and avenues open in Mm. a a game, whereas in a film, you have a very steady hand in terms of leading your audience through. And I think that's going to be the challenge and my interest in what can you do with augmented reality or or Mm -hmm. virtual reality in terms of storytelling? Because if you are, in fact, in the middle of that story, who's the director's hand that's taking you through? And Mm -hmm. uh, I keep trying to figure that out. (laughs) And hopefully someday I do, because if I do, I think... I will make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Very quickly, can we expect to see your influence on four? 
I'm sorry? Can we expect to see an influence on Kingdom Hearts 4 at all? Oh, well, we'll see. I mean, my, my hope would be this is a world that Kingdom Hearts will embrace. And mm. I would like to, you know, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. All right. Roy Conley, thank Thrill. you very much for your time. Really, my pleasure. Really, really. really, nice conversation. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for this squiggly animation one-to-one. You can watch these interviews on our YouTube channel or subscribe to us via your favourite podcast provider. We are a free podcast, so if you'd like to support us, you can do so by leaving a very nice review and by recommending the podcast to a friend. And if you're feeling extra generous, you can financially support the show by scrolling down to the bottom of the squiggly homepage and clicking the support us link. All proceeds help us do the work we do across the site. Thanks again for joining us, and don't forget for all the latest news, reviews, interviews, and everything else from the world of animation, head over to squiggly.com.